Welcome back, troglodytes, to your daily dose of guitar information, the Trogly's Guitar Show. Last week, Stu Mac announced something that could be game-changing. A better way to ship a guitar? I'm skeptical, but listening. Shoutouts to Rob for being the first one to tip me off to this video. So I went ahead and clicked on it, and lo and behold, the very first top comment right here <laughs> mentions me, and people want a review. So here's my first impressions of it. Shipping a guitar used to be a hassle. You have yeah, to find it is kind of difficult sometimes. Box, and it has to be the right size. If it's too big, you'll pay extra for shipping. Then there's packing material. <laughs> Newspaper compresses and gets smaller. Wait a minute here. Okay. <laughs> Who's who's doing this with packing peanuts? I could see myself doing that same shot, obviously an over dramatization, but packing peanuts are a real pain, especially when you're taking them out if you don't know that whole trick. Let's continue. Bubble wrap leaks hair, and you end up with too much space in the box. That's what breaks guitars. Uh, Poor padding and room to It depends what kind of bubble wrap you get. The guitar shipping system changes all of that. It's a super secure way to hold the guitar during shipment. The Aeris system stores flat and takes up very little space. That is Look the best type of bubble are. wrap. This is a three pack. Three complete shipping boxes with three sets of inflatables. Kind of like the ones Reverb sells. That's small enough to store anywhere. Now you but no they don't do the shipping to supplies. find a place to store bulky shipping supplies. It's an amazing system. Eris is the industry leader, supplying guitar manufacturers and large businesses. Stumac is partnered with Eris, so our customers can buy the guitar shipping system too. There's a version for an acoustic guitar in its case, for an electric guitar in its case, and here's something really special. A secure system for shipping a naked guitar without any case. There's a version for electric guitars. I think and this is where they're going to make a lot of money is the no Stumac, case system. You can get three packs and six packs. The complete guitar shipping systems and a handy pump too. We also offer a foot pedal valve for inflating from your shop. That's the only thing I don't like about That's this so far that you have to pump it up Let's yourself. Pull from this three pack and see how it works. Each individual cell inflates from this one point and when they're full, they seal themselves shut. If you were to cut one cell open, the others want not lose any air. They're super fast. That's a big thing. Sometimes you'll get some, you one will pop, the and then they all pop. To help cradle the curves of the guitar case. Fit the bottom cushion okay. onto the end of the guitar case. Put the guitar in the box. Slide the cardboard support beam down over the guitar. This keeps it from moving and also supports the box in the center. Now add the top yep. cushion. See how these two points stick up? That's part of the design. To press against the end of the I box, really like so the that. It's a very small around, attention so to detail. Just seal it up and you're ready to ship. It's secure and lightweight, and it's really solid. You've only added air. No extra weight to pay for in shipping. Plus, the length and width of the box are precisely figured to keep your shipping costs down. Your guitar is ready to That's survive a big trucks, thing. airports, or whatever else comes its way. Okay, so in paper and in theory, it seems to be a really good system. So I reached out to them myself because they didn't see my comment or whatnot, and they agreed to send me not one, but two three packs. Now, I only have the one for the guitar case right now, but maybe we'll do a separate review or I'll just throw it in with one of my other vlogs of packing a guitar without a case, because I think that's the game changer for them. But let's go ahead and check this one out. So here's what it looks like. It comes in a little box, just like you saw in their video. Now, the only other boxes that I have experienced buying are the reverb ones. So theirs looks like this. So comparatively here, these are a little bit less wide to ship and a lot less taller, which means these boxes will be more form fitting, which makes sense because they have a bunch of different systems as we'll see a little bit later on in this video for both acoustic bear guitars and electric guitars, cases and non, whereas this reverb one was more designed to be a one size fits all from keyboards to guitars. But I figure some people might have experience with these, so it kind of helps you get in the mindset of what to expect from this. Now this is not custom artwork by Stu Mac. That's my kids, I'm sorry. <laughs> they got a hold of this box before I did. So let's go ahead and open her up. Okay, so it looks like we got about three boxes in here and the packing supply. They've got it labeled bottom wrap, top hat, end cap. I like the way that they've labeled all this stuff. And that's everything that's in this package. Now, just as a 
little bit of advice. You can use that as additional packing material. All you gotta do is cut it up and like fold it. These are our boxes, Aris branded, and there are indeed three of them. And this is what we're using to put over top the case for each box. So this is a single walled box system. I think it would be nice if in the future they offer a double walled box. Just, you know, extra protection. But if it's as good as they say it is, they don't need double walls, right? So let's go ahead and get a, uh, a rough size estimate on this guy. Here's something that's always important to make sure your box has is that box certificate of the crush test. In order to be successful for a UPS damage claim, your box has to have that crush certificate to make sure that you were using a proper box. I'll go ahead and tape the bottom now. I always get a lot of people asking me why I don't use a tape gun or something similar. It's because, look, I put this tape under pressure because then I know it's doing its job to the max. Whereas tape guns, I can't do that. Not as easily anyways. There we go, that's the bottom done up. And now the top. So this is what I would consider a small box right here. We have a dimension of, everybody would bill that at 19, seven and 46. And the weight of just one box is two pounds, 10 ounces. Now a common complaint with these things when you buy a shipping box and they fold them in half like this is you do get a slight weakness crease right here. It is, it's a weak spot to the box. It would be easier for something to protrude against that. But what I'm always looking for is holes. Thankfully, I do not see any on this. I'll show you what I'm talking about. Now by no means is this a bash the reaver bundle kit. It's just the only one I can have any illustrative point to. And it's right there. By design, to help these guys fold better, they have that little hole. Right and you always have to cover that over with additional tape or else like excess moisture can get in there. So not a big deal, but something I'm glad these guys don't do. So as far as the box goes here, I, I wouldn't necessarily say it's anything special. It's just your standard box that you buy online that they fold up and send to you. But I think where this gets special is the packaging materials. So this is our main little sheet here. I'm guessing we just fold it up like this and then you place it over top of your guitar. And this gives you kind of the protection I'm talking about, what I normally do with bubble wrap, but in cardboard format. And another thing that this would be doing is reinforcing the box. I might be saying, huh, how's that gonna fit? It looks like they're wanting us to do that. Okay, I see now. So I only need one of these. These extra two are just kind of freebies for me. That's what I get in exchange for doing this video. And I've got this guitar that needs to go to France. So I guess this will be our test subject for today. What guitar is it, you ask? Well, it's one that stayed around a lot longer than I thought it would. <laughs> this top, it's always breathtaking every time you see it. Jeez. Now this sold really fast once I listed it, but the guy didn't pay for a couple of days. So I just figured he wasn't interested in buying. So I canceled the order. Then he got upset with me. So communication is key, but now it's going on to a beautiful home in France. So I'm gonna go ahead and do my standard stuff to this on the inside of the case. But since it's very likely this might be your first video of mine, I'll go ahead and document my shipping process again. You're gonna to wanna to take your little knob off because that's very prone to breaking. Then I just wrap it up like this and I include a business card just in case, heaven forbid, everything gets destroyed except for the item inside the box. That way they can still contact you. That, hey, we have this guitar. Where is it supposed to go? Well, if they're honest people anyways. Another nice step is to remove your bottom strap button if your case doesn't have a nice cutout like that because sometimes if the guitar gets dropped, you can crack your guitar up the center. Then if there's anything loose in here, I like to add a little bit of bubble wrap just to make sure nothing's wobbling around on the inside. And I prefer to detune. You don't have to detune. It's kind of a, uh, a personal preference thing. Depends on what you believe in. I think having less tension on the neck equals less of a chance for a crack to appear in case there is trauma but some people think having more force on there would keep it together. I don't know. I'm not here to argue that, just showing you what I do. Now, I don't completely detune these things. It still has a little bit of tension, but not a lot. Listen. 
That way, there's still some tension on the neck, so the truss rod doesn't have to be adjusted as much. I then lined the whole case with bubble wrap. It is optional. I mean, something this padded probably doesn't need it, but I like to be safe than sorry. As I was talking about earlier, not all bubble wrap is created equal. The stuff I use is safe for nitro finishes, so. but some nasty bubble wrap can affect the finish. So definitely do some tests with the stuff that you have locally. Then I do a double bubble of that. I fold it in half, and then I create another crease right here for additional neck strength. And I lay it right there. And the last step I have to do is I like to put something in between the frets and the strings because sometimes prolonged contact with the top of the case can cause a fret divot somewhere along the frets and then you have to level recrown. So it's really simple just to put something like there. You could even do a newspaper. A sheet of paper also works. I just have a bunch of old business cards I need used up. So that's what I use those for. And something new I do is I put bubble wrap over top of those just because my business cards have been prone to falling off. It could technically scratch your guitar a little bit, but here we go. Perfectly safe guitar. Headstock is boosted up so it's safe within the case. It's padded within the case. Everything's good to go here. All we have to do is close it up. It might be harder to close the case now, but it's good. This puppy does not move inside there. Okay, so now we have the bottom wrap. Now, the only thing that's not good is I do not have a pump and I don't think they sent me one. So let's see if I can find something that I have that I can pump this up with. Okay, so they try to make it foolproof. I thought these arrows pointing up would mean you're supposed to pump the air into right here but <laughs> it took me a hilariously long amount of time to figure out that it's this green arrow. They have a little tab here. That's what they want you to pump the air into. Now, if you're a regular Joe like me, and I probably wouldn't want to pay money for an extra pump, you might happen to have a ball pump around for your basketballs and whatnot. This seems to work. I mean, it's not as good as what they give you, but as long as you cup it off, it seems to be okay. Let's go ahead and see how long it takes to pump this up by hand. Roughly a minute and a half. I think their pump would do it a lot quicker because it's the proper size. This thing's a little bit small, but that looks about right. So the way I see it is air kind of flows through here and then goes into these and then automatically seals off. Now, what I'm really interested in is, are they lying to us or are they telling the truth? Let's cut one of these things open. Okay, I see. If you cut one of these, it's the whole row will go out, but the other ones will not. Let's test, can we tape that and then reinflate it? Doesn't appear so because I think it got sealed off from the air or maybe it's just too far down the chain to get it. But I guess good to know anyways. So what you do with this is you put it inside the box and it folds just like this. Now what I'm really liking about this is it forms the box. Like you don't have to fight this to get down there just the right way like you have to do with bubble wrap sometimes. And this just works and that's going to cradle the bottom side of the case. So let's go ahead and do that. Well, that's a pretty nice secure fit there. I'm happy with that. And then they're wanting us to use this, which as we discovered earlier, it folds up like this and folds down. So it secures the guitar in the center, which is very important to do. Just so you can see here, I've got that pushed all the way down to the body. And that does secure it pretty well. So now we just have to put that top hat on it, which I believe is what's in here. Now, I'm not sure if I'm not pumping this right, but a few of these sections do not get as filled up as others. Maybe that's by design because it's both of those right here that might help it to form to the if this happens to you, you've done it wrong. In order to make sure every single one of those gets filled, you need to stretch it a little bit to ensure that the little air gaps are getting to all of them. 
I'm sure a lot of this stems from me not having the correct pump, but I find if you hold it down and stretch it as you're pumping air into it, you don't have any issues inflating every segment. So if you put this on your guitar and it flops around like this, you've done it wrong. Yeah, no surprise, <laughs> I messed up my first package. So I went through and did the next guitar I had to pack up. So just as a brief too long, you don't wanna watch a 20 minute thing, what you do is you form your box, you tape it shut, you pack the guitar away in its case the way you prefer to do. You put that little bubble at the bottom, then you put the cardboard slip over top of that, and then properly inflated, this top bit should protect the guitar and make it not float around. Now the moment of truth. Everything inflated the way it's supposed to be. We still have just a little bit of movement. It's not a lot. This is closer to acceptable to me. All this really needs is just a little bit more support right here. And I think they've got a perfect system. So if they could just include like the brown paper type that you crumble up, just to eat up that little bit of extra dead space. Or if they would make this part two or three bubbles longer. I think they've got pretty much a perfect system right here as far as a cookie cutter shape goes. There's just a little bit too much dead space left, but that is definitely sufficient. So this is the era system. It's got a little bubble thing at the bottom. It's got a little bubble thing there. And you've got some support right here where the box gets creased by that little cardboard thing. So would I ship this guitar like this? With those small enhancements I mentioned? Yep, two of them are going out tomorrow. But let's go ahead and learn about their pricing now. Okay, so prices are always subject to change, but here's what they're charging for these systems. The pump, these guys are $8.95. This is the attachment that I was missing for my little hand pump. But if we go over to Walmart, you can get this one for about five bucks. Honestly, I think it's well worth paying $4 extra just to have that little bit because I bet that would take that minute and a half time down to like five or 10 seconds. Because once I got that seal down tight, it definitely inflated pretty quickly. Or if you have an air compressor and you want this pedal to use it with that, this is available for 150 bucks. Probably only worthwhile if you're a business shipping tons of guitars every day. It looks like they even have those fret shields in case you don't have a piece of paper or anything. So here's what we were looking at, the electric guitar shipping system with a case. It looks like they're charging you $60 for the three pack of boxes. Now it's a little bit unclear to me if that includes the end caps in this stuff or not, but I'm guessing no, it's just the boxes. And the only difference between these guys is if your case looks like this, so it's a molded top or if it's a rectangular top. So that's nice that you can intermix what you would need. But let, let's say you have the more common case right there. So that's $75 total for just your shipping materials. Now, unfortunately, that does not include shipping costs. So it looks like to most standard places within the United States, that'd be an extra $22.99, or they do have expedited services available. But, you know, if you're buying a lot of boxes, you could always do this Stu Max membership. That's 40 bucks. You know, if you buy this more than once or twice, I think it'd be worth it because that'd be free return shipping if you needed to do something like that and free standard shipping. If you buy a bunch of stuff from Stu Mac, I could see how that might be useful. Let's say you're just a one-time Joe. You've got 75 for the boxes. You've got about 23 for shipping. And let's say $9 for the pump if you don't have that. So take that divided by three. You're looking at almost $36 to ship a guitar. Now that seemed a little bit high to me, but you gotta remember, Stu Mac is like the Gibson and Fender custom shop world of guitar parts. Their things will always kind of have a slight premium to them, but I honestly don't think they're too crazily far out there. You're paying for the convenience of everything being right there and able to be shipped to you quickly. Now, you can get free boxes from Guitar Center or another local music store if they're around you. For me, that's not possible. There aren't any local music stores around me that'll hand them out. Another option would be buying from the Reverb Shop. They have three boxes for $35. I don't think they actually make money doing this. This is just for Reverb sellers. So that puts you about $12 a box versus Stu Max 20. 
But do keep in mind that the reaver boxes are much wider and bulkier, and even if you do cut down the top, it's the other dimensions that get you for a higher dim weight. So really, is there a difference between the cost of using one of these? It depends if you get free stew max shipping anyways or not, but I think it would come very close once you calculate the whole dimensional weight. And something that I didn't even realize until just the very end of editing this, within the cost of the box is that cardboard support beam as well. So it's not really fair to compare them apples to apples to any other box. I'm not sure if there's a place you can buy those separately. I would like to see StuMac offer those separately as well though. So I hope you troglodytes enjoyed getting to look at this Aris brand electric guitar shipping system today, now offered by StuMac. So in the end, I really do like this shipping system. Cost-wise, I think I'll just keep using my used boxes since I know how to use bubble wrap and all that. But if you're not an expert, you're not confident, I could see how this would definitely be peace of mind. Thank you for watching, and we will see you tomorrow on the next episode. Take care.